Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now, Tenshree, today we're going to talk about OUM as the way forward for you today and where we're going. And OUM Tenshree is a very young institution comparatively to mm. other learning or ed higher educational institutions in Malaysia. But it's also undeniable that we've actually achieved a lot in our young years. Yeah? And in your opinion, Tenshree, what are some of the biggest uh, achievements or highlights uh, for OUM in terms of what we have achieved so far? Okay, uh, I think one of the most important thing uh, for OUM mm -hmm. during the last decade is the awareness about lifelong learning mm -hmm. and people having the second chance mm -hmm. in terms of uh, academic qualification, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, enhancing their uh, knowledge mm -hmm. about certain subjects and so on. The fact that uh, OUM as a total enrollment of more than 100,000 mm -hmm. since it started uh, to take in student mm -hmm. in 2001 mm -hmm. uh, is indicative of the uh, increasing awareness of uh, people, the community uh, towards uh, open and distant learning. Mm -hmm. Now, this is uh, to me very important because in a world where uh, there's increasing competitiveness, uh, there's a globalization, uh, our human resource development must depend uh, to a large extent on the uh, enhancing knowledge and skills of our workforce. So if you have a situation where uh, people are aware of the need to enhance their knowledge and skills, and there's a conduit, there's a, there's a path that they can take. And I think OUM, to that extent, has played a very important role. Uh, the other thing which I observe is the fact that uh, the image of OUM as a provider of higher education through uh, ODL through open distance learning mm -hmm. is increasing, increasingly uh, well accepted mm -hmm. uh, among the community. So it is because of this that we have achieved an enrollment of more than 100,000 uh, learners since we started. Mm -hmm. Secondly, within that period, we have also produced over 40,000 graduates mm. in areas such as business administration, business management, IT, uh, education, and so on. So this in itself is, speaks well for our degrees, our diplomas, and even our postgraduate programs. Mm. Because people realize that while they're at work, uh, it is also possible mm -hmm. to continue their education. And we have given a lot of people the opportunity uh, to do uh, their uh, undergraduate studies as well as postgraduate studies mm -hmm. uh, through our system. Uh, the third uh, item which I would like to say mm -hmm. is the, uh, our ability to leverage mm -hmm. on technology mm -hmm. uh, to deliver our uh, programs. So I think uh, in a situation where uh, our, the majority or almost all of our learners are actually uh, uh, people at work, mm -hmm. people who are working, uh, the need to have a flexible system of delivery is certainly paramount. So in that sense, we have utilized, we have leveraged on technology to do that. So I think that is also an important aspect mm -hmm. of uh, OUM during the last uh, 10 years mm -hmm. or so. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tansri, we, we always revisit it and it's always good to, to revisit the, the past, what, what we've gone through and all that. But 
also what's also important is to look forward to look to the future and when you look into the future then Sri, uh, what do you see for OUM? I think we uh, in the future 10 years 20 years down the line I would like to see that uh, the academic programs mm -hmm. that we offer to the community to our citizen will be enhanced uh, good quality we keep on uh, enhancing the quality of delivery mm -hmm. because i believe in the quality education whatever we give to our students or learners it has to be the best mm -hmm. and uh, the programs that we deliver must be able uh, to allow our students mm -hmm. our learners to adapt mm -hmm. uh, to a new situation at their workplace and I think that's to me very important. Mm -hmm. So because of that, uh, and our uh, we being uh, student-centered, mm -hmm. I feel that uh, we have a big role to play in the future, mm -hmm. to be part of the uh, important initiative to enhance our human resource development. Mm -hmm. The other point in the future is we we should be we should be playing an important role in terms of internationalizing our program as we have done uh, at the moment currently uh, i must say we are very proud of the fact that we have uh, worked with other institutions overseas mm -hmm. to offer our programs at overseas location mm -hmm. now probably uh, at the moment we have about 10 location mm -hmm. and I think that speaks well uh, for our program mm -hmm. because they are accepted worldwide. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, we must be able to sustain this and in fact to improve mm -hmm. our program and perhaps to get more uh, countries to, uh, to embark a collaborative uh, arrangement with us mm -hmm. so that our programs can be uh, offered overseas. Now, we started uh, perhaps uh, six or seven years ago mm -hmm. with uh, Yemen, uh, where we have our program. And then we developed, as I said earlier, to probably 10 countries now where we have our programs, mm -hmm. uh, including, if I may say so, uh, Bahrain, the Maldives, Sri Lanka, uh, Ghana, uh, Vietnam, uh, and then we have also in Singapore, uh, in Hungary, mm -hmm. uh, for the first time, an institution like ours from Malaysia have been able to uh, locate our activities in East Europe. Mm -hmm. So th I think that's also an important aspect of our internationalization. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we keep on uh, doing this, and uh, in fact, the latest development is for us to have uh, our program offered in Zambia. Mm. We are working at that at the moment. There are two uh, uh, education providers. We are talking to them now, mm -hmm. and hopefully by September we have our program in place there, mm -hmm. uh, which is also important part uh, of uh, our development in Africa. international cooperations and all that is a, is a huge deal for OUM but Tantri, you even mentioned it earlier student centeredness is almost a credo to you when you talk to uh, OUM staff especially you always mm, talk about yes, learner yes, yes, yes. so Tantri, uh, what is learner centeredness to you? No, I think uh, uh, let me put it this way mm -hmm. because uh, our sustenance our survival as an educational institution, particularly at a higher education level, mm -hmm. is to ensure that whatever we offer has to be the best mm -hmm. uh, for our students or for our learners. Because I believe in delivering the best program, the best delivery system, so that our students, they have an, a very positive uh, learning experience when they go through 
OUM. So in this respect, we always uh, ensure that our modules, our IT system, our tutors are trained, for, for instance, our tutors have to be trained well to suit uh, the needs of the student. And that's important. Now, for this purpose, I've urged the faculty members uh, and our staff uh, to ensure that whatever the student needs, we must try to take care to the best of our ability. Because the students are actually our ambassadors. Mm -hmm. If they, uh, they have gone through a very positive experience, a very rich experience with us, then the chances are that they will inform other people that you, you can enroll in OUM and you go from there. I, I think that's uh, being student-centered is our, I think, the strongest point. Mm -hmm. If we are not student-centered, then we cannot uh, enhance our quality of delivery, the quality of tutors, the quality of our academic staff and so on. Mm -hmm. So I believe in that. And I think partly because of that, OUM has been able to attract as many students as possible. Mm -hmm. If we look at our record, I think uh, every semester mm -hmm. uh, we have about at least 2,000 students mm -hmm. coming into our system in various fields, in various areas of our academic program. And also apart from that, the Ministry of Education has been able to uh, to uh, what they call continue their uh, their program to uh, to uh, enhance the qualification of their teachers mm -hmm. from diploma into degree mm -hmm. in education. I think that's also important because uh, we believe in, uh, as I said earlier, giving the best to our student. Mm -hmm. So we would like to see the continuous support from the community, uh, from the people at work, mm -hmm. uh, whether they are government servants, whether teachers or people who work in industry to support mm -hmm. our program. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important to me as well. Mm -hmm. And a big part of that support, especially in Malaysia, nowadays we see more and more people being aware of lifelong learning and this is something you've also mentioned earlier, Tan Sri. And I think this is especially true after the launch of the uh, blueprint. Yeah. Uh, that we had recently, last yeah. year actually, yes, and we yes. played a big role yes, in that yes. blueprint along with the yes. Ministry of Higher Education. Now, Tashri, how can OEM leverage on this newfound awareness of lifelong yeah. learning and its importance? I think the, uh, the, uh, the role that we played uh, to assist uh, the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. in the launching of the uh, blueprint, blueprint for uh, lifelong learning is very certainly very important. Mm -hmm. We, uh, through the uh, Ministry of Education, uh, we manage uh, to uh, have this uh, blueprint. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that it was launched by the Deputy Prime Minister in November last year uh, speaks well for uh, the government's support mm -hmm. of uh, lifelong learning program. And we are here to ensure that the blueprint, or at least part of it, mm -hmm. is being given prominent in our activities in the future. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, uh, uh, there's still potentially, mm -hmm. uh, we still have a lot of room to improve the quality and qualification of our workforce. Mm -hmm. Now, our workforce uh, must, as I said earlier, must be enhanced all the time. Mm -hmm. The quality of their qualification, their competencies mm -hmm. uh, at the workplace is also important. Mm -hmm. So because of this, who, uh, who apart from mm -hmm. uh, the ministries, uh, Ministry of Human Resource, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. uh, the one that play an important role are uh, also the uh, ODL institution mm -hmm. like OUM. I think uh, we, we must be able to utilize 
the initiative taken under the blueprint mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, we get a larger proportion mm -hmm. of our workforce uh, enrolling in our program. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are other providers as well, mm -hmm. but uh, they too, I think, must play an important part in this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tansri. Um, of course, you are, you are the, the leader here at OUM. So, Tansri, what would you say is the biggest challenge that you feel OUM faces today? And how would you inspire us, uh, we are employees, OUM staff and learners and together to meet it head on? No, I think uh, the biggest challenge uh, as far as OUM is concerned mm -hmm. is uh, to ensure that, as I implied earlier, that we have good quality programs, we satisfy the expectations mm -hmm. of our learners mm -hmm. and the community at large. Mm -hmm. And in order to do this, I think we must be able to governize all our staff, whether they are academic, non-academic, supporting staff, mm -hmm. they must be, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, they must be able to uh, achieve mm -hmm. the targets that we set for OUM. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the quality of the product, mm -hmm. in terms of the quality of the programs, mm -hmm. in terms of the quality of facilities, uh, IT, our premises and so on. So this is why uh, I think we try to uh, inculcate among our staff mm -hmm. uh, the positive values that we have in our shared values. Mm -hmm. And one of the things which I always uh, uh, impart mm -hmm. to our staff is uh, the professionalism we have, mm -hmm. uh, which allows us to improve our programs, mm -hmm. to do, uh, improve our delivery, and of course, to ensure that our premises, our centers throughout the country have the highest quality of uh, services uh, that should be uh, given to the student. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, uh, professionalism, we must be able to work as a team. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's important because in a world that is uh, very challenging in terms of competition and so on, we must be able to work as a team, uh, not only among faculty members and non-faculty uh, members and non-academic staff, but also uh, within the faculties, uh, they must be able to work with other uh, departments in the university and so on. Mm -hmm. So I have always emphasized teamwork so that our staff, uh, no matter where they are, mm -hmm. they have the spirit of uh, working with others. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no boundary. They have to be multi-skilled. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, today, if I ask you to do uh, the work of the uh, Faculty of Science and Technology, you're able to go there and to help our staff. So this partly is also a challenge. Uh, because uh, if we can observe in many institutions, uh, the, the staff are always compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. uh, they work in one section, uh, sometimes they do not want to help mm -hmm. the other section. To me, I think it's important to forget all these compartments, mm -hmm. forget about all these boundaries, and to ensure that we grow mm -hmm. as one institution. Mm -hmm. So I think. The shared values that we have, uh, being innovative, uh, teamwork, or, uh, and then professionalism, uh, what else? Innovation. Inno uh, yeah, innovative. And uh, I think these shared values must be there. Mm -hmm. And w this is why I think our, uh, our assembly that we have mm -hmm. uh, every two months is important a part of imparting that, uh, imparting the uh, uh, the wishes of the top management, so that our all our staff have the same spirit mm -hmm. uh, to work together to ensure that OUM is at the forefront. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tansri. Um, 
And so we're almost at the end of the of the segment. But on a lighter note, I mean, Tansri, this is not, uh, you're not somebody that we always get access to. So don't you, on a lighter note, how, how just so our, listener, our audience can get a better, uh, get to know you a little better, can you share with us how do you start your day? How uh, do? How do you start your day? Oh, how okay. <laughs> and how does it end? And do you still have enough sleep, enough rest in between or something? Of course. Uh, well, I normally uh, I'm uh, I wake up very early in the morning actually. Uh, by five five fifteen, I'm already awake, mm -hmm. and then uh, after subo, mm -hmm. I uh, get uh, uh, coffee and maybe some oatmeal, mm -hmm. and uh, I normally leave the house about seven fifteen mm -hmm. at the latest, and uh, you know that my house is. Actually, in PJ, it won't take long at that time to reach our office, probably 20 minutes at the most. Mm -hmm. Sometimes 15, depending on the traffic. Mm -hmm. But if I leave at 7.15, uh, by 7.40, 7.45, or sometimes 7.35, mm -hmm. I'm already in the office. Mm -hmm. My habit is always to ensure that whatever letters and files that I receive mm -hmm. during the day, I must complete it. Mm -hmm. it, it is my habit. Oh, okay. And uh, I'm quite meticulous. Uh, I check everything that our staff do, mm -hmm. uh, reports, mm -hmm. uh, annual report, and so on. And uh, minutes of meeting, uh, I go through. And I'm quite a meticulous person. I'm trained that way, you know. And uh, I will try to ensure that during the day, mm -hmm. I complete whatever is needed of me mm -hmm. in terms of looking at the files, signing letters, sending out letters, so there won't be delay. Mm -hmm. And in the evening, uh, most of the uh, emails, I will try to answer. Mm -hmm. Most of the email. Mm -hmm. uh, I never want to leave, you know, answering email the next day. Mm -hmm. So that's again a habit that uh, I acquired. And uh, normally I rest at home. Mm -hmm. uh, after dinner, I read a book if I don't have emails to answer. <laughs> or I read magazines, mm -hmm. depending on my mood. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly reading books is also an important part of my, my schedule, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a person uh, that can work in that sense, mm -hmm. uh, you can be fully satisfied mm -hmm. that you have done a good work mm -hmm. during the day. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, everyone must get that kind of habit mm -hmm. uh, so that you won't postpone whatever is due to you. Mm -hmm. uh, but more importantly, you must be able to enjoy your work. Mm -hmm. That's very important because you go to the office, mm -hmm. you must be able at, to start the day, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this mm -hmm. to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. And with a full sense of professionalism, integrity, mm -hmm. you can do your job well. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I, for instance, always remind the staff that uh, you you must have integrity mm -hmm. and that's the most important. You can make mistakes mm -hmm. during your, you know, during the day when you do something, you can make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You can ask somebody, you can ask your dean, mm -hmm. you can ask your head of department, you can ask top management or whatever. Mm -hmm. But never, never try to, uh, you know, uh, to, to lose your integrity mm -hmm. because that's to me very important. Mm -hmm. That's why I think through the years, uh, I can always tell our staff that you must improve, mm -hmm. uh, which is taken uh, very positively. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do not tolerate people who kind of, for instance, uh, they cheat the system, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't quite like it. Mm -hmm. So.
so you know what I mean I think and uh, this is where uh, I hope all our staff mm -hmm. no matter where they are whether they are uh, working as a you know in the uh, as a driver whether they're working in IT, CIDT and so on they must be able to enjoy their work mm -hmm. and at the end of the day when they they go back to the office they will say that the the money the salary that i earn is commensurate mm -hmm. with i have given mm -hmm. to the organization i think that's important if you try to cheat the system mm -hmm. you try to come late mm -hmm. or to go back early or come to the office and off you go mm -hmm. i think that's uh, to me is not uh, you don't have the positive values mm -hmm. that uh, any good organization should have mm -hmm. so i think i think in short uh, i would advise mm -hmm. uh, whoever it is mm -hmm. particularly those who work at oum mm -hmm. or even our learners mm -hmm. enjoy the uh, what you are doing mm -hmm. do uh, whatever it is do it the best of your ability because as human beings, we make mistakes, but we learn through our mistakes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Dan Sri, for spending some of your time with us. Okay, thank you. Thank you.